Welcome to Manson Lives Math Lab. Thank you for subscribing. Much appreciated. This is a requested video. So I want to cover this question from a exam P SOA question. So here are the preliminary details. We have um, a deductible of one, a max claim payment of five. So as the insurance company, we're not paying more than five. I don't care what your losses are. We are interested in auto losses, okay? So I have my random variable X is auto losses. This is given, and we're given that the auto losses are distributed exponentially. Uh, our parameter for exponential distribution is, well, the textbooks I studied, uh, it was lambda, and the expected value uh, of the auto losses is two. Now, what we're actually interested in is the expected claim payment. So this is the notation that I've used in previous videos. This is kind of just what I roll with here. Whenever I have a claim payment, I usually call it X sub P or maybe Y sub P. So that's the situation. Or right, after this, let's see what we can do. Um, first thing I will say, and I always actually uh, recommend you do this uh, for these types of problems is you want to write down the values for your claim payment. You want to, I mean, I've constructed a new random variable. We need the values that this claim payment can be. So what I mean here, let me write it over here. What is the claim payment? I mean, this is probably the most important aspect of this question, in my opinion. All right, it's gonna be piecewise defined, as they usually are. So, can the claim payment be zero? Well, absolutely, it can definitely be zero. It's actually zero uh, if we have zero is less than x is less than one. Why is that? Well, consider the details. If the loss is between zero and one, we haven't even reached our deductible. So the, as the insurance company, we're not gonna pay anything, right? We're gonna pay you nothing if you experience an auto loss less than one. How nice of them. What else can happen? Well, uh, we can certainly pay whatever the loss is, in this case, X minus one, um, under what conditions? When will the insurance company pay the loss minus one? Well, we certainly need the loss to exceed the deductible of one. Now be careful, what is the max amount of X here? Remember, our max payment is five. So I claim that this needs to be less than or equal to six, right? Think about it for a second. If the loss is six, I have a deductible of one, and the payment is six minus one, which is five. They're not gonna pay more than five, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Then what? Last thing is that the insurance company will pay five if the loss, the auto loss, exceeds six. So the auto loss exceeds six. Again, in my opinion, this is one of the most important steps to take. So I recommend you write this sort of thing down. And again, when it comes to the inequalities here, it doesn't really matter where I include things because auto losses are a continuous random variable. I mean, they're represented by exponential distribution. It's continuous and intuitively, I think it makes sense it's continuous anyhow. Now we can answer our question. We can absolutely answer our question because we have all of the necessary details. So let's see what we can do. Let me see if I can squeeze it in here. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's write down the expression we're after. Okay, we're after the expected value, the expected value of, well, the expected claim payment. I'm just going to use the definition of expected value, expectation. In this case here, um, we need to integrate since we have a continuous random variable. Uh, the first integral is going to be the following. Uh, the integrand is the value of the claim payment, which is x minus one, uh, times the probability density function, which I have not even written down, but that's fine. Uh, it's equal to one half e to the negative 
x over 2 dx. Again, I'm looking at my formulation over here. I'm not going to write down the situation for x between 0 and 1 because the integrand will be 0. Integral of 0 is 0. No need to consider this. Moving down the line, we have this situation here. And hopefully you can see uh, this is my PDF of the exponential random variable. You guys are so familiar with that. You don't need me to write me that. You don't even need me to write that down, right? You're good to go. And this, this of course, is the value of xp. This is just definition. Uh, this is just the definition of expected value. And we need some bounds of integration. So another reason why I want this is we need to go from one to six. Uh, we need to add this to what? Let me actually get rid of this. I do not like running out of room. Let me get rid of this stuff. Um, I don't even need this. I mean, write this down. We know that the value is five when x is greater than six. So let's, let's get rid of this. Let's give ourselves some space. I want to fit this all on this board. So I need to add this integral to another integral, which is the following, plus the integral of six, well, going from six to infinity of five times the PDF. So here again, the PDF of my exponential distribution with mean two. Once I compute this, I'm good to go. So more or less basic calc two material, right? Looking at this, I definitely need to use what technique of integration here? Well, this is a product going, well, sort of integrating a product, you need to say integration by parts. This is a technique we use in a situation and that's what I'll do. This right here, by the way, is easy peasy, easy peasy. I'm gonna write something down for this and you're gonna nod your head and say, that is absolutely right. This I claim is five times the probability uh, that X is greater than six. In other words, this is the survival character characterization, right? This is just, in other words, one minus the CDF. Hopefully you're got, uh, getting on to what I'm saying there. I'm bringing this up because this is quite easy to compute, quite easy. So let's do the integration by parts though. Um, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, doing integration by parts, uh, I always use um, the technique of Liate to determine what U is, to determine what U is. So what I mean here is when I'm using integration by parts, I need to know what U is. So I use Liate. Hopefully you guys have heard of this. Uh, this uh, abbreviation stands for log inverse this is usually inverse trig or something like that, which we don't care about in actuarial science. Algebraic triggered exponential. This is the order in which I want to um, basically consider what u should be. So I look at my integrand. I have an algebraic and I have an exponential expression, which means looking at this uh, liata here, log comes first, then uh, inverse, then algebraic. So algebraic is here. That means I let u be algebraic. If this is old news to you, good. I hope this is old news. I hope this is just basic stuff, right? So u is equal to x minus 1, du is certainly dx, and dv is the other stuff. This business, I recommend bringing the half with it because when it comes to integrating this, it actually makes it more convenient to have the half. v is equal to e to the negative x over 2, and actually is a negative, right? Very good. Uh, by the way, if I had to do integration by parts more than once, use the tabular method. Go to my video on the exam P must know gamma distribution to see how I go over the tabular method. Quite convenient stuff. Let's continue then. Um, again, uh, integration by parts is the uv less the integral of v du, right? I'm going to skip some stuff. I'm hoping this is not news to you, right? Integration by parts is uv less the integral of v du. Basic calc 2 stuff. Calc 2 is not too bad for you at this point, right? Easy peasy. So this is what we have. Uh, we have uv, uv, so negative x minus one, e to the negative x over two, less the integral of v du. But this, I mean, we can integrate this. This is nothing, right? 
go ahead and integrate this. This is easy. Um, I have a lot of negatives floating around, but I claim uh, when you do the integration, you should get uh, the following. You should get 2e uh, to the negative x over 2, and we're going from 1 to 6. So there's my integration of this using integration by parts. I'll go ahead and verify that if you need to. And over here, as I mentioned, I mean, this is just kind of the sort of game you play, the typical game you play with exponential distribution. Um, this is just related to the cumulative distribution function, which hopefully you have uh, stored away in your memory banks because that's something you need. And so this right here is just plus five uh, probability that x is greater than six. Uh, so this is equal to um, e to the negative, I'll write it this way, 6 over 2. I mean, that's it. I mean, go ahead and go ahead and compute that if you want. But that's what we get. Now, um, I do need to clean this up. Let's plug in our bounds of integration. Uh, this is equal to negative. When I plug in 6, it looks like I get 5e to the negative, s negative 6 over 2. I'm plugging in 6. So negative 3 minus 2 e to the negative 3. That takes care of plugging in 6. Now plug in 1. This term is 0, so minus. First term is 0. And now I need to subtract this business. So I plug in 1. This is uh, 2 e to the negative 1 half. That looks good. That looks good. So that's the first piece. And then I have to add this on, right? So plus. 5e to the negative 3. We're in good shape. Just need to combine like terms here. Um, I have a few powers with of e to the negative 3. Let's deal with that. I have negative 5, but then I have plus 5. So those are gone. And now, so let me just cancel those. So these are out of here, right? These are gone. And now I have this business. This business here. Um, typically in math, you like to write positive terms first. So that's what I'll do. I'll distribute the negative, and this is positive. So this is equal to 2e uh, to the negative half and minus 2e to the negative 3. That takes care of it. And actually, um, the answer choices are given as exact values. There's no approximation to this. So we just leave it uh, and we're good to go. Hopefully, this makes sense. And hopefully, um, in the future, uh, you write down your definition of your new random variable. In this case, it was the claim payment. I highly recommend doing that. It makes your life a lot easier. And uh, that's it. Hopefully it was helpful. Tell me what you think. And um, thanks for the request.